How do I become a more successful prepper? Well, we're going to talk about that. But first off, hey everybody, I'm Michael from Asymmetrical Preparedness. And thank you for being here. Thank you for all your support. I appreciate any comments you can leave, especially positive, uplifting, or helpful ones. Um, clicking that thumbs up helps. Sharing the videos helps. A lot of things like that help. Help the channel. Help the community grow. <clears throat> anyway, how do I become a more successful prepper? Prepping, as you guys probably have learned, is a very large topic. It covers a plethora of areas, topics, things, skills, abilities, all of those kind of things. There is a lot to it. So the biggest thing to becoming a more successful prepper is, I feel number one, making it a priority. Number two, organization. Actually, I'm not going to number them because it's not necessarily in order. Organization is key. Um, setting priorities. Not procrastinating. We can't, we look at preparedness and sometimes we're like, well, things are going pretty well, you know country's going pretty well, you know, good job, um, you know, things are just going well. So you're like, well, maybe I can just take it easy on preparedness, prepping and stuff like that. You know, it's not really that needed anymore. Well, I'll tell you what, it is needed. Making it a priority is very important for everyone, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, no matter where you live no matter your socioeconomic background, your status in life, your skin color, your ethnicity, your, your sex, your religion, it doesn't matter. Preparedness is so important because no matter what, at some point in your life, you're gonna run into a difficult situation. It may be a natural disaster. It may be a man-made disaster. It may be a large event, or it may be a smaller event. Like, not to downplay it, but the situation in Texas was very real, very, very dangerous, a very big deal for the people involved with that loss of power, the freezing temperatures, all that stuff. Very big deal. People died. It was very serious, not downplaying it whatsoever. But it was fairly short-lived. It was, you know, it was. It was a relatively small event in the big picture of things. Obviously larger for some, but anyway, that, you know, maybe on the more, maybe medium size, but, you know, a small event maybe like we had a foot and a half of snow that stuck around for a couple days. Okay. That's not necessarily an SHTF event, but what if you have a you don't have a vehicle and you're not capable of getting out in it? Maybe you live somewhere where they don't plow the roads. For some reason, just say you're stuck at home for a couple days, or like we experienced lockdowns last year. Those kind of things, where maybe you didn't go anywhere for a while. So it's advantageous to be prepared, to have a little bit of food on hand, to have water or access to water, to have things that you need to exist on and live on for a couple days, a week, maybe a month, depending on where you are in your preps and your preparedness journey. If you're beginning, if you're advanced, wherever you are. If you're just working on building a bug out bag and starting your food storage versus you're on a homestead trying to be self-sufficient. That's kind of the, the you know, the blah the gamut, <laughs> the scale, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, that doesn't matter what it's called. Um, what matters is that you're on the journey. What matters is mindset. You are aware, you are awake to the idea of being prepared. You are awake and you have seen the need 
to be prepared, at least in a little bit. Uh, that's common sense. This whole prepper thing and the, the stigma of being a prepper, doomsday preppers, that kind of did it, you know, for a lot of people. Um, used to be people, you know, used the term survivalist. That took on a negative connotation. Now prepper is taking on a negative connotation for some people. Although, to me, it's just common sense. I want to have things to take care of my family so that we can eat and drink and live. I say all the time, prepping is living insurance. Seriously, that's what it is. Life insurance is just death insurance, basically. But prepping really is living insurance. It'll make sure that you live. You may not be able to pay your bills. You may not be able to pay your mortgage, whatever. But you will eat and you will live. Um, so making it a priority is very important. Organization is very important. Um, knowing what you have, analyzing, self-analysis, analyzing your weak er your weak areas. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Maybe you're really good. Like a lot of people, I started out um, prepping tactically. That was my mindset because former military, I like the tactical side of things. Speaking of which, we talk about those things over on Patreon because we can't really talk about that here. But anyway, if you want to check that out, links in the description. Um, and that's where I started. That's where some people start. Some people start gardening because they love gardening. They're gardeners. Um, they love growing food. A lot of the people start from different areas. Maybe you have medical background. So medical preparedness was on your was your first start. Whatever it is, you have a strong area. You have an area that you prefer, a preferred area in prepping. So that's probably going to be your strong suit. It's the realization and the recognition of weak areas and doing things to mitigate those weaknesses, to lessen the impact of those preparedness, of those weaknesses that will have, lessening the impact those weaknesses will have on you in a situation. Um, a lot of people's weakness is. Um, NBC, nuclear, biological, chemical warfare stuff. I get it. That's something that's very difficult to prep for. Very expensive. People think, oh, I'll just get a gas mask and, you know, a couple of filters. Well, they don't realize that those filters, depending on the, uh, um, how, how thick the contaminant is in the air, how long the filter will last. If they're way on the outskirts, so they're just getting a little bit of contamination, the filters will last maybe their full length of time, eight, 10, maybe 24 hours. But if you're in a saturated environment, the closer you are to the source or the closer you are to the saturation point, the quicker your filter gets saturated. So those filters are expensive. Yeah, you can only have so many, I mean, along with all the other preps. So that combined with chem suits, combined with you know, decontamination routes, decontamination stations, um, backup chem suits, you know, biological suits, all this. I mean, it's a big deal. It's a very big deal um, to prepare for. So typically that is a lot of people's weak area. Probably most preppers, that's their weak area. Um, so build in your strengths, yes, but prioritize your weaknesses also. This happens through self-analysis like I talk about. Always be doing a vulnerability assessment is what I like to use the term. I used to assess vulnerabilities in security systems in the military. So I like that term, vulnerability assessment. Um, it is basically looking at what you have, writing everything down, something like that, or at least getting it up here, what you have, and then thinking about all the other stuff. <clears throat> all the other stuff. Look at prepper lists, lists of lists, bug out bag lists, um, food storage lists, just all the different things at all different websites, you know, YouTube channels, blogs, um, um, forums, all those kind of things. What are people talking about? What do people think you need? Uh, but also take it with a grain of salt because some of those people are just blowing smoke up your butt. I don't do that here. That's why a lot of times I say I cannot tell you exactly what you need. I can tell you what I need, but I live in the Pacific Northwest where it rains a lot. So my emphasis on water may be a lot less than, say, Morgan Rogue of Rogue Preparedness in Arizona or somebody 
in um, the desert somewhere or living in the Arctic tundra of northern Alaska. We all have different needs. My job here and what I want to do is encourage you to think for yourself. Look at what your needs are in your area. You also, your ability to fill the needs. How much extra money do you have? How much are you willing to put into it? How much do you have available to you? What's your physical condition like? What are your disabilities? Those kind of things. We're all different. We're all different people. So the biggest part of it is mindset. Making it or making a decision to become a prepper or just to be prepared. Be ready for eventualities, for natural disasters, for um, power going out, for water going out for sanitation going away, for um, anything, food shortages, um, increased food prices, uh, there's so many different things. And then you can go big picture, you know, like EMP event, uh, a war, uh, whatever it may be, a financial collapse, society, you know, stuff like that, big event. Then self-reliance, self-sustainability, bug outs, security, all other things come into play. If it's a short-term event, um, you can. A lot of people can fuddle through it, even if they're not really that prepared. Um, as you become more and more prepared, more and more situations you are able to deal with in a in a really effective manner. It's also about thriving, not just surviving. Um, so yeah, prioritize analyze, make things, make it part of your life. Oh, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things I feel is very important for preparedness, to keep yourselves fresh, to keep yourselves going, to keep yourselves motivated, to keep yourselves into it, is to make it fun. Make prepping fun. Do fun things. There is so much to prepping that's fun. I mean, hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, backpacking, uh, rappelling, mountain climbing, rock climbing, running, rucking, um, canoeing, ba- uh, you know, bike riding, archery, shooting, uh, knife, knife fighting, martial arts, swimming, um, canning, gardening, raising your own animals, all these things, as well as a plethora of other things, are or directly relate to prepping. Wilderness survival, bushcraft, so many things. Having fun in the outdoors, um, foraging for wild edibles, wild medicinals, learning how to identify plants, going berry picking, as simple as that, is becoming more prepared. Teaching your kids, your friends, your family, people you care about, how to identify, identify wild edibles, what's edible, what's not getting them into gardening, getting yourself into gardening. Even if you're in an apartment, you can do some vertical hydroponic system with some grow lights or something. Or square foot gardening if you're limited on space. Or big fields if you have a big huge homestead. And tractors and all that stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't have that kind of space. Um, But the fact is that you do something. You guys see on my channel my POD, Prep of the Day videos. Just a little quick video about some idea that it pops into my brain um, about preparedness. It's all, like I said, it's about the journey. It's about making steps, like baby steps. Like they say, you know, how do you eat an elephant? Well, it's not with one bite. It's little bites at a time, right? Okay, it's, you know, that's just a saying. But anyway, prepping a little every day. Every time you go to the store, grab one or two or three or four, whatever it may be, items for your preps. Like for example, every single time I go to a store that carries seeds, I buy at least 10 packs of seeds. Sometimes 20, sometimes 50 packs of seeds. Um, And then the freshest seeds, I seal in a Ziploc bag, um, throw in the refrigerator. I get it's not the perfect sealing situation or uh, saving situation. And then if I get around to it, I can, you know, auction absorber, vacuum seal it, put it in a, a bucket with a gamma seal lid with oxygen absorbers, all that stuff like that. I get it. Proper storage. Um, but do a little bit every time you go to the store. Even if it's buying a pound of lentils for 98 cents. 
that's one of those can't miss. Saw that the other day, good price. I picked up five of them so it's for under five bucks. Five dollar prep of the day. I got five pounds of lentils. Lentils are very good prepper food. Lots of protein, lots of carbs, lots of good stuff. There's a lot of good things like that. I talk about on this channel regularly. Um, and we talk about a lot of good stuff over on Patreon, like I said earlier. That's more of the uh, tactical side of things. And the uh, pew pew stuff. Anyway, oh, also you may note, I'll just let you know now, that um, a lot of the videos that are oriented towards that will be moving to Patreon. I will be shutting them down here and moving them over to Patreon because I want to keep this channel going. And with everything going on, censorship, yeah, I get it. I'm not just capitulating. I'm not rolling over. I'm not accepting it. But what I'm doing is I'm doing what I feel is necessary so I can keep this channel alive so that I can reach people like you. It's not all about politics or making a political statement or anything like that. It's about reaching people. Everybody matters. You guys matter. You can be a prepper, like I said, from any political background, any religious background, any ethnicity. I don't care. You're a human being, which means I care about you. I do. You are one of God's children. You are my brother. You are my sister. We may not agree on everything. That's fine. We may not agree on politics. We may not agree on religion. We may not agree on a lot of things. I don't care. That's okay. It's okay not to agree. That's what people don't realize nowadays. It's okay not to agree on everything. We don't have to agree on everything. But we can still love each other. Hatred is horrible. I don't hate anybody. That's another problem. We need to learn to love each other. We need to learn to work together. Set aside our differences. I know that may, be, may seem very, very daunting, if not impossible at times. I get it. I, I go through the battle also. But getting people on board with preparedness is what I'm about. I want to reach as many people as I possibly can. So I got to keep this platform alive because honestly, there are other options out there. I get it. But they're just, they're not the same thing as YouTube. YouTube has a much higher potential of reaching people, of being an effective method of reaching people, of getting the word out, of building the community, of building more assets. If you've watched my videos, you heard me use those terms, assets versus liabilities. An asset is somebody that's into preparedness, somebody that's prepared, even if it's a little bit. You are more in the asset column than you are the liability column, which means the more people that are prepared and the higher level of preparedness they have, the less of a threat they are to us and to me and to you because they won't be starving. Their families won't be starving. Thus, they won't be out looking for food. They're not going to come try to take it from me or you because they'll be able to take care of their own business and feed their own families. That's what I want. I don't want more problems for society and our nation. I want good times. I want peace. So encourage others. That's a big part of preparedness also. We can't do everything on our own. That's why if you've heard the term MAG, Mutual Assistance Group, M-A-G, that's a group of people you can rely on to help out, to work together, to share skills, to learn from, to have each other's back. It's just, it's basically your friends, your family, your co-workers, your uh, fellow worshipers at your religious institution, whatever it may be. It's people around you that you can trust and you can rely on. It may be neighbors. Who knows? I don't know who it is for you. You all have somebody. You have a mag, whether you think you do or not. Even if it's just your family, your immediate family, or your extended family, you have a group. You have a group of people, more than likely, you can rely on to some extent, even if they're not preppers. Somebody that'll help you come over and, and fix things, or do something, or watch your dogs for you. Those kind of things. So, But building that to be a prepper group is a really good idea. We can't do everything by ourselves. If we get into a big event situation, 
I don't have the time of the day in the day. My family, my immediate family, doesn't have the time in the day to, you know, wash the clothes, cook the food, grow the food, uh, harvest the food, hunt, fish, raise animals, provide 24-hour, 360-degree security. We don't have time for all that. There just isn't. As well as sleep. We're humans. We got to sleep. We got to eat. All that kind of stuff. We cannot do it alone. And the camaraderie, the fellowshipping, that's also good. Feel a sense of belonging also. That's why there's so many things like clubs and groups and stuff out there. Because human beings have an innate sense or a desire to belong. Just sec. So having people around you is a good idea. There's, a, as you see, there's a lot to this topic. Becoming a better prepper is a lot of it is just doing it, making the decision, um, and not just. To me, it's very important not just to be an Amazon prepper, not just to sit on the couch with your laptop, with your cell phone, with your whatever device, and order stuff on Amazon. If you choose to do so. I have a link in the a link in the description below for my storefront. A lot of good stuff there, and it helps out the channel. I get the four percent instead of Amazon pocketing the four <laughs> percent. Funny how that kind of popped up. But anyway, seriously, don't just be an Amazon prepper though. Get out and do the things. Learn skills. Skills. You gotta have things. Yes, I get it. But skills, I would say, are more important than things. I get it. You can have all the skills in the world, and if you have no food, you're still going to starve. Not necessarily, though, right? What if you have the ability to go and forage, hunt, fish, trap, snare, all those kind of things? Then, yeah, you may not need as much food storage. But that's not like hunting. A lot of preppers say, "Oh, when SHTF happens, I'll just go hunt." Well, let me ask the, you know ask anybody that lived through the Great Depression how well that worked for them. How quickly the deer population in this nation was almost annihilated. Our deer population now, I think, is more healthy. I think we have more deer now than we ever have in our nation before. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that is the current stat. Um, so, yes, it is an option. Yes, I say incorporate hunting. Yes, be able to hunt, but don't count on it. Don't rely on it use it as kind of a backup, an extra, a bonus. Same with trapping, snaring, all this stuff like that. It is much more likely that you would have the ability to supplement your diet, your food, what you eat with small game instead of large game though. Talking grouse, pheasant, dove, partridge, quail, um, uh, squirrels, um, those kind of things. Turkey. All those. You know what I'm talking about. Small game. Rabbits. You know. And all these things are also under dietary constraints. It depends on if you eat them. I know people that follow Torah do not eat squirrels and rabbits. Because they have um, paws. Instead of hooves. I get it. That's cool. Make sure that your plan incorporates and fits into your belief structure and your dietary constraints, whether you're vegan or you're a carnivore, a meditarian. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Just make sure it fits in what you, how you eat. Bam! How do you like that magic trick? My sunglasses disappeared. <laughs> oh, yes. Anyway. Part of being prepared, and wow, this is a, I'm running long here, way longer than I normally do. I'm just on a roll. And I don't think I'm reiterating a bunch of stuff. This isn't fluff. I don't do fluff here. I think these are good topics. So I think it's, I hope you guys are sticking around listening and watching the whole thing. I, I feel this is good information. Um, a lot of it is just stick sticking to it. Prepping a little every day, like I said. Um, and always be moving forward. Don't get down on yourself. Don't get frustrated. Um, 
or overwhelmed. It can be, it can, you can easily get overwhelmed because there's a lot to preparedness. The food storage, water storage, um, all the etc. things you need. You need the cordage, you need the fire starters, you need the knives, you need the, the bows and arrows, you need the skills, you need the canning jars, lids, the canning stuff, you need the uh, five gallon buckets, mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, um, all these things. <laughs> I get it as well as a lot of other things all the medical stuff, medical skills. So just take little bites. Do a little bit every day to be prepared. Turn off the TV. I think that's a good recommendation anyway. Unplug. Learn some good skills. Take some classes, first aid classes. Wilderness survival classes. Go camping, hiking with your gear. Make sure it all works. If you don't get out and do the things, survive in the woods for a weekend or whatever, test your camping, your, make sure your tent works, your um, hammock and your tarp set up, make sure that you're properly warm, you're properly uh, protected from the weather, your gear works as advertised, as it's supposed to, and that you know how to use it, then you're not going to be a very effective in a situation if you don't actually get out there, do the things, use the stuff. And if you happen to break it or wear it out, fine. Buy another one. Save for another one. A lot of things, there are some things that you can get inexpensive. And I would suggest if you're starting out and you're very, very limited in budget, maybe start off as inexpensive as possible dollar store stuff uh, you know inexpensive made in china stuff like led flashlights and get a cheapo one things like that but then what i suggest doing is replacing those items with higher quality items as you can afford them and then what you do is you say you have them in a bug out bag you're starting off in the bare in the very beginning and you're just building a bug out bag if you replace, like say a flashlight, for example, that cheapo LED flashlight that costs 99 cents. When you get a nice quality one, you take that 99 cent one, you maybe replace the batteries in it, and you throw it in another, in a box, cardboard box. If you have another bag, throw it in, in your, your secondary bug out bag, your backup bug out bag. Until you get everything in your primary bug out bag, good, quality, high quality stuff that will last you, that will do you right, and will do what it needs to, when it needs to. Then that alternate bug out bag, maybe start doing that with it. And then whenever you take the stuff out of that, throw it in a random prep box. Just label it random preps or survival gear until you're done. That's what I'm saying. You keep on building up like same with the stuff that we talk about over on Patreon, the tactical side of things. Building up that gear, that equipment, those loadouts. But we talk about that over there. It's always about, it's about always improving. And one, one big, big, big part of preparedness. First off, actually just I had an idea pop in my brain and then another idea jumped on top of that idea. So let me talk about the idea that jumped on top of the idea. Preparedness is not is, is multifaceted. And how I feel, and this is my personal beliefs, are that my number one thing, my number one area of preparedness is spiritual preparedness. Spiritual preparedness is my number one priority. Second is mental preparedness because this will trump anything this is what wins the fight this is what will allow you to survive the fight and to continue living and thriving then physical preparedness speaking of physical preparedness that's the idea that got jumped on by that other idea physical fitness your physical ability to perform tasks, to lift things, to move things around, to carry things, to walk distances, 
to run distances, to carry that bug out bag long distances. If you can't do that, then work on it. If you have physical disabilities that pre preclude you from doing anything, do your best to work around them. Figure out ways that you can work around them to the best of your ability. I get it. Everybody can't go out and run a five minute mile. No problem. I can't either anyway, anymore. And we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. But unless you are completely paralyzed, you have at least some ability to improve some area of physical fitness. And I highly recommend that. Physical fitness is going to be a vital part of your life in an SHTF scenario, especially a large event. Because everything's going to be more physical. You're going to be outside more. You're going to be out in the elements more. You're going to be carrying stuff more manually. You're not going to be driving to the office and sitting at a desk. Everything is going to be out more manual. You're going to be out more manual labor, more physical labor, all these kind of things. And I'm not saying you have to be an ultra marathoner or a triathlete or a professional bodybuilder. You don't have to have six pack abs. In fact, you probably don't want six pack abs in a, in a preparedness scenario. Because if you are, if you're entering into a good, a bad situation with extremely low body fat, then obviously you have less to lose. So it may impact your ability to survive survival type situations. Not saying you should be really heavy either because that's bad. That's negative. That's bad for health. It's harder in your joints. It's harder on your body, your heart, your, all your organs. Try your best to be healthy. Be a healthy weight and be physically capable of doing things. Doing the things. <laughs> Along with that, please eat healthy. Please limit processed foods. I think the best way to eat is the way God intended it. Fruits and vegetables from the earth, the earth provides us, or we grow. Animals that we raise, or we buy at the store. Raising our own animals obviously is the best idea, or bartering with our neighbors, or buying them from our neighbors. The local farm down the street, great but eating as naturally as possible. There's a lot to it. Keeping yourself hydrated. But like I said, I need to wrap this up. Do a little every day. Keep it organized. Always be assessing your weaknesses and trying to eliminate those weaknesses. Fill those gaps so that you are well-rounded. I know Asymmetrical preparedness, asymmetrical being not even. 